Welcome to the Workbench After Hours podcast. My name is Keith and I'm your host. This is where we talk about the firearms community, shop talk, and everyday life experiences. Welcome back to the Workbench After Hours. I'm your host, Chris, and the guy next to me, the man with the plan, Keith. (laughs) Yep. So for this week, we are going to try something different. We are. <laughs> so I I don't know how I, because we do a lot of bourbon and our phones listen to us. When I was on YouTube, I started getting this bourbon channel that kept coming up. And I'm like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check this out because there were a couple good ones, uh, comparison videos I wanted to, to watch. Some whiskey that we tried. And it's a father-son channel. And it's actually really good. I ended up watching a bunch of their videos. <laughs> <laughs> so... Cool, like SLD or SLD S- drinks? Yeah, I think something like that. Something like that. They're in their basement. They got all the backdrops really cool because it's... Their bar, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> with all this whiskey. And one of the videos was five best beginner scotches for bourbon drinkers. Because obviously we try bourbon. We love bourbon. Yep. But the few times we've tried scotch, I haven't liked it. You haven't liked it. Yeah, it's... It's a whole other breed almost. It is. <laughs> but we've tried enough bourbons at this point to where I think our palate's a little more mature. Mature. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? Let's try it because, hey, we're obviously bourbon drinkers. So if yep. they think these are good scotches to start with, to kind of branch out a little bit, because I've always wanted to try scotch. And like it. Yeah, I think we tried it on here one time. It was the Johnny Walker, Mm -hmm. and you were not a fan of it. No, I I know for a fact I don't like Johnny Walker. Yeah. So I got two of the recommendations that were on there because I could only find the two. I couldn't find the other three. And this is one of them. It's the Glendavich. Yeah, Glendavich. Glendavich 14-year. And Mm. why this is a recommendation is because it's aged in ex-bourbon barrels, for 14 years. Yep. So you're going to get a lot more of that kind of bourbon flavors along with what you get in the scotch. Yeah. And they said they also, after it sits in those bourbon barrels for 14 years, that they put it into brand new charred oak barrels. So it'll be interesting to see if we actually <laughs> get that taste or if it's going to be like all yeah. the other scotches. <laughs> yeah. So what it, it's got, and the cool thing about these is it has some information on the back of this container here yeah. so what's it what's it actually tell us about so it says it's a 14 year old and our first whiskey matured in two types of american oak barrels the ex-bourbon cask are the bedrock giving the indulgence of richness and sweetness after 14 years then we shake it awake in a deep charred new oak barrel for a vivid and vibrant punch of vanilla so cool well let's uh Open that bad boy. I have these glasses that the other set came with, so we're going to try that other one uh, on a future podcast. But it came with these glasses. It was really cool. So I'm like, well, (laughs) we'll use them to try try this neat. And then we got other glasses and ice for when we get to that part. Man, I can't tell you how long I stood walking up and down (laughs) that aisle looking for these two. Because right I was there. like, I had their, their that video pulled up, and I was looking at all of them, and then I'd have to go <laughs> up and down the aisle looking for that one, and I only found two. The other one I'm going to bring on uh, in a future episode. I asked, there was a lady there that was working, and I'm like, do you, because I was asking her if she had something, uh, the other one that they recommended, and she didn't. I'm like, well, what about this one? And she's like, I don't like scotch, but I love that. Hmm. So we'll try that one. But I figured this would be a good starter since this is the ex-bourbon barrel one. Yeah. So we'll give it a shot. So It's a unique bottle. Yes. So color, you get a copper oak. Yeah. Now, as far as a nose, we are supposed to get deep, vibrant vanilla notes with hints of citrus, caramelized brown sugar and cinnamon, baked apple and ripe summer fruits in a balance with a rich oaky aromas definitely getting the caramelized brown sugar yeah i'm not really getting i'm smelling a little bit of vanilla i'm not getting any of the apple no or getting mostly the caramel and vanilla yeah 
I don't know. Taste, we're supposed to get it beautifully rich and sweet with layers of creamy toffee, woody spices, candied orange peel, and fresh toasted oak. <laughs> and then the finish, it just says long lasting with lingering sweetness. Creamy toffee, woody spices. Definitely get the spices. <laughs> Hmm. I'm I'm not getting the orange. The back end's different. Like you don't have that burn that you do with some bourbons. Yeah, well, you get it up front, it seems like, but on the back end, you get a different taste. And I will. It does mention a long lasting taste. Yeah, because on the back end, it's totally different. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not, it's bad, not bad at all. It's just different from what we're used to. Hmm. I mean, there's that, there's a certain peatiness little, that you get with scotch. Yeah, there's I mean, a little bit of that. You can get a little bit of the orange if you do like a really small. Mm -hmm. I get a little bit of the orange, but. I could see some woody spices in there and creamy toffee. I can see that. Definitely yeah. not get, I, I haven't gotten orange peel. I'll take a smaller sip. It's like very. Just a, a small hint. Yeah, of that. a small, very, very small hint. Mm -hmm. Man, we'd be bad at describing these if we didn't have this <laughs> I know. pulled up. I'd be yeah. like, I don't know, it tastes like, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. honestly, it's it's not bad for a scotch. Good, really. neat. Like yeah. I could probably sip on this. Yeah, neat without having to put any ice because you know some of those bourbons that we try, we're like, oh man, we got to cool it off with some ice. Yeah, <laughs> this is not like that at all. What's the proof on that? It is. 43% alcohol. So probably 90 as proof uh, or close to it. Close to 90. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely different like from all the other scotches we've ever tried that were like, huh, nope, never again. <laughs> and I was thinking about this earlier. So this is aged 14 years in bourbon barrels, right? Yeah. Think about that. That is a huge time investment for... Not only bottle. this company, but any company, yeah, any bourbon, whiskey maker, any, I mean, you usually have to let this, whether they call it maturing or aging, for generally five to seven years is average, yep. and then 14 years. But you will have a kid start kindergarten when this is set in the barrel, Yeah, graduate high school before this is corked. Bottled, yeah. Is that not like... That's crazy to think about. Yeah. Kindergarten... <laughs> Graduating high school before this is ever removed from the barrel. Jeez, <laughs> it's like I don't, like how many people do you think are working at this place that actually started this when it originally just got distilled, put it in the barrel to when they're like, all right. I don't know. That'd be an interesting question. Like, I wonder if like any of the master distillers or any of the still distillers mark but like barrels. Mm -hmm. from, like when they first start, and then see if they eventually get one. I think that'd be the coolest thing. Yeah, because it's like. Yeah, I distilled this and put it in this barrel, but I'm not going to get to see the end result for 14 years. Yeah. Well, that's probably why they got like the 10 years, 14, mm -hmm. 5. Even though, I mean, 5 to 7 is what uh, Jack Daniel said. Yeah. That's still like 5 to yeah. 7 years before you get to enjoy that. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, but 14 is like, wow, that's yeah. a... And honestly, it wasn't expensive. I think this was about 50 or 60 bucks. So roughly what we pay for some of our whiskeys and mm -hmm. bourbons that we already pay for. And that's where that uh, channel is getting me in trouble because I'm like, <laughs> oh, man. Because they, they do a lot of stuff with like 20 and $30. and But a lot of their stuff is more in the 50 60 Yeah. And then they go even, even higher. higher. But I'm like, man, there's some stuff I want to try. One of them, which I haven't found before probably because I never looked for it, but we've tried tin cup when Jacob was on here. Yep. I found a tin cup 10 year hmm. and they said that's supposed to be really good. So that was about a 50 ish dollar bottle. Yeah. I was watching them and I was watching the ones like bourbons you shouldn't never buy, <laughs> mm -hmm. which I don't know. I saw the 2022 one and I didn't, I've never seen her. Yeah. We've never tried any of those, but you said there's one, I think, they said with the Jefferson Ocean, mm -hmm. the guy's like, I'm an idiot, and I've done this twice now, and I bought a bottle of it. 
and it's not worth it. Which I bought a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <It> <laughs> when was, I saw that, I was like, I hope to God he doesn't say this. And then when I called you, he's like, man, I've been watching this whiskey channel. I was like, oh, yeah. And he started describing it. I was like, man, I've been watching that all day, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. I it, it was funny because, yeah, I was telling Chris, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm at that liquor store because I've been watching this bourbon channel. And he's like, is it SL date drinks or whatever? I'm like, yeah. Like, <laughs> what are the chances of us that are binge watching the same yeah. YouTube channel without ever <laughs> talking mentioning about or talking yeah. about this channel before? Because I watched that and then I watched this, the other guy that was down in Oklahoma. He has like probably a $10 million scotch whiskey bourbon collection. And so I was watching that and then the next one was that. And that's why I started watching. I was like, oh, this is good. But just those collections they've got is just, oh my gosh. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> I honestly don't even need to put this on ice. It's that easy to drink. It is smooth. Like I've It's different because you get that taste for so long. Mhm. Yeah, yeah, at first you get that little bit of woody spice burn and then it goes away. Mhm. Unlike where our, our normal whiskeys it's always on the back end. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it says finish long lasting with lingering sweetness. That is yeah. definitely true. I wouldn't say super sweet or anything like that, but a little bit of sweetness, but yep. the taste does stay on your palate for a while. Yeah. Which, I mean, I'm I'm <laughs> not disappointed in yeah. this at all. Like, this is something. I would say I'm not going to sit there and have several glasses of oh, this yeah. or drink it. You know, this is just like a night topper, or what? Pretty much. Mm-hmm. This is have a little sipper, maybe a finger or two, and yep. call it good. I mean, because sixty bucks isn't cheap at by any means, but for a uh, scotch, yeah. I mean, that's. I know. I've been looking for the Jack Daniels one they came out with this year. That malt. Yep, I, you and me have both been like, oh, we want to try this now. <laughs> I found on that channel yeah. that Jack Daniels actually sent them yeah. that uh, a malt that they came out with, but we haven't seen it. Yeah, I've been looking for it. It's got this. It looks like it has a blue label. Yeah, it's like a blue this label. Does. Yeah, I can't wait. I hope we can get it. And it should be about 50, yeah, 60 said bucks. Yeah, 50, 60 bucks. That was interesting. I watched that, and then I watched a bunch of their <laughs> videos, and mm-hmm. they are talking about how they can get some of the whiskeys that we can't. And I'm like, man, that's BS. Yeah. But a lot of them, they do have to go to Kentucky to get. Yeah. And it's cool because like some of their videos, a lot of them are just trying different whiskeys, but then they have some telling you kind of why, what makes a Kentucky bourbon, a Kentucky Kentucky bourbon, bourbon. what it has to meet to be, to have that label as a Kentucky bourbon versus, you know, Tennessee whiskey. Yeah. And, yeah. And then bottled and bond, what all that means and yep. stuff. And so I'm going to get another bottled and bond. I think it's called Early Times, they said. And then that way we can, in that episode, go over what bonded, and all bonded that. means and what it requires because it does require the government. Yeah. <laughs> Which is surprising. Go figure. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, I, yeah, I got a couple other bottles I'm pretty excited about <laughs> to try on the future episodes yeah because of that channel yep that and i got a couple more from christmas that i need to bring <laughs> yep so i think i'm going to switch mine to the ice just because uh, we have it up here so why not yep and i can use tongs now because Ooh. my wife got us this moving on up i know and i'm just gonna fancy dump that The problem is, it's like, what do I do with this now? Yeah. That's definitely a good little scotch. Yeah. Pour a little bit more in there. So we have something to drink throughout the episode. <laughs> Speaking of episode, if you didn't read the title, we're going to talk about what, what again? <laughs> you don't even know? <laughs> I know. I'm just what, playing. Uh, so there's no gun of the week because we're going to bring on several, several different guns. But the main topic of the week I wanted to talk about is what to look for when you're choosing a home defense gun. Yeah. I know we had uh, an episode where we went over our home defense setup, but we didn't really touch why why or what to look for. Because, you know, most people, especially new people that are getting into guns, are typically doing it to have a home defense gun. So I wanted to, there's some things you want to look for and don't want to have (laughs) because there are some guns that aren't, you don't want to have as a, Home defense gun. But first, I want to try this with a, <laughs> some ice on it. Let it chill, see how it tastes, if it changes. Definitely brings out the orange. 
flavor, I think, and the like more vanilla. Yeah, it more of the vanilla. Definitely changes the taste for yeah. sure. It doesn't get that initial heat like it did before. Mm -mm. I almost, I think I prefer it neat. Yeah. Surprisingly. Yeah, because it's giving you a whole other palette right now. Yeah, like it's. It's totally different. Like you're, I'm picking up more fruits now. Mm -hmm. Huh. It's still lingering. Yeah. But yeah, this is. Hmm, that's crazy. <laughs> so if you guys are bourbon drinkers mm -hmm. and have been a little hesitant and to get into scotch or have tried scotch and like, this is garbage, I don't like it. <laughs> we highly recommend this yeah. because this is really, yeah. <laughs> really good. Like, I cannot... Yeah, I'm almost speechless on it. I know. And the fact that we would rather have it neat yeah. kind of tells you something because we always switch over ice. ice. Like, all right, we tried this neat. Let's, let's pour it yep. over ice. This, man, I actually preferred it neat. Yeah, so did I. But it does give you a lot more flavor, though, on the ice, on the rock. It does. So it's, it's kind of cool how... It's almost like every bottle of scotch comes with these containers. Yeah. Just to keep it away from the daylight. <laughs> but we'll get this off of here so we can bring on the main other stuff. Topic. I'm going to kind of monitor the camera because I've been having <laughs> issues with it delaying, and I don't know why. <laughs> bought new cables. I bought a new uh, dongle for my laptop. Huh. I don't know if it's the capture card I have hooked up or... It's not the camera because I can see the screen on the yeah. camera. The camera's not doing it, so I don't. I don't know. I didn't haven't messed with anything, <laughs> but home defense. Yeah. What guns? I guess I, I guess we can start with what guns you have and what you chose for home defense. But why? Okay. So show us what we, what you have, why you chose those, and if you use them in different scenarios. So first off, I got the Glock nineteen. Right now, this is my everyday carry so it's usually by my bed stand at night no matter what since it's my everyday carry mm -hmm. in winter but usually if it's like if i let's say i put this in the safe i've got another uh, since i got like a dresser my whole bed's pretty much a big dresser right so i got a little safe in there and usually it's my fns9 i've got two magazines one with full self-defense rounds and the other one's just regular rounds um this has actually got trijicon night sights on it so if something happens at night i can still aim and be proficient at it so that's what my really my home defense gun is in the bedroom right now is these two guns pretty much so and i don't know i like having being able to just grab and go is all i'm cared about at that point point. and you have hollow points <clears throat> yes i do what is there a certain brand hollow point or grain? Uh, I think have? I just went Hornaday, if I remember right. I think yep. I split them all up. Yeah, they're Hornaday. I can't remember how many grains, but I got them for my FNS. I got it the whole uh, magazine's filled with hollow tips. My Glock is half hollow, then half regular rounds. Um, but then if I do have to use my FNS, I got both magazines are completely full, ready to go. Can't remember if they're 15, uh, 17 plus one. Yep. <laughs> so yep. now I've noticed that you have two pistols. Yep. I don't see a shotgun. I did have a shotgun, but it was more of a hunting shotgun. Okay. Like that was my first gun I ever bought was the shotgun just for home defense. And it was a Browning BPS. It has a 28 inch barrel. And if you have to move through the house with that thing, you got to be really careful. Or you're going to bang up the barrel real bad. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, I had it in the bedroom for a while. I was like, maybe the intimidation factor will kick in just hearing that <laughs> racking of it, just yep. be intimidating. But I had that there before because I didn't have the Glock. I wasn't carrying that every day. So I had that shotgun in the closet for the wife. So if shit really hit the fan, she can use that just <laughs> spray and pray almost. But all right. So, do you have any, do you have a rifle? I do have a rifle. Okay, what do you got? I got the AR-15. The Joe Biden special. Yep. All right. So you said you had the pistols in your bedroom. Yep. Where do you keep this? This is downstairs in the basement, usually okay. in the safe. I've got two magazines ready to go. All I got to do is open the safe and go. Okay. So this is if I come home and 
like I got to clear everything first. First thing I'm place I'm going is the basement to clear to grab this because mm-hmm. sixty rounds is gonna do. <laughs> yep, I'd rather have more rounds and be prepared than not be prepared. So, when you're looking for a home defense gun, there's some things you want to look for, and there's some things you should have. Obviously, first and foremost, you want a reliable gun. Yep. <laughs> so you you definitely want something that is probably newer. Um, you don't want to use your great granddad's single action Colt. <laughs> probably <Yeah. laughs> not going to be the best. Um, even revolvers. I mean, could you use a revolver? Yes, but you're limited to, you know, five, six rounds usually. Yeah. And I don't know. Most of them don't have night sights. Hey, if that's all you have or you like that, awesome. Yeah. And use that. But typically you're going to see something with a larger semi-auto pistol for the most part and then you got your shotguns and rifles you definitely want to look into night sights yeah because most of the time you're going to have to use it at night or in in low light situations so either having night sights which will help you get on target or a flashlight of some sort yeah and if you are using a gun at home for self-defense you almost always want to have a flashlight if you're going to be, say, clearing a house at night. Yeah. Because you may hear something downstairs. Get your gun out and go down there and see somebody and shoot them, not knowing, hey, this could be, you know, a drunk neighbor accidentally coming <laughs> in or, you know, say yeah. you have a teenager in the house. So you want to be able to light up the subject to make sure, one, it is somebody who's not supposed to be there yep. or <laughs> whatever. But you want to be able to light up your target, make sure that yeah. what you're going to shoot is something or somebody you want to shoot. Yeah, I usually got my stream light right next mm-hmm. to my bed so I can grab that too with the gun. So yep. I just grab and go It's pretty <laughs> much. Yeah, so if you don't have a light that can mount on your firearm, I definitely recommend having another flashlight you can yeah. handle because there's ways to maneuver with a flashlight and a gun at the same time. But you definitely want to make sure if it's all dark, yeah. And people are like, oh, we're going to give away our, our location. No, because it's going to be dark. You're shining a flashlight in their they're eye. They're going to blind them. Yeah, they're going to see where you are. But yeah, they're going to be blinded. They're yeah. not going to see you. They're going to see this bright yeah. light. And depending on the flashlight, too, you can get those ones that can do like the strobe. That'll mm-hmm. really mess with them yes. for a while, make them disoriented. But I've definitely heard horror stories of people accidentally shooting a family member, a friend that yeah. Came in and they didn't know it and they shot him because it was dark and didn't realize until after yeah. the fact. So, especially if you have teenagers that may or may not be sneaking in and out of the house. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, definitely usually, too, <coughs> like I know in my house, my wife usually <laughs> keeps the kitchen sink light on that's above the sink. Mm-hmm. So, it's kind of lit down there already, too. Yep. So, yep, that helps having yeah. some night lights everywhere. Uh, another thing people use may or may not be something you want to is a laser. Yeah, uh, a lot of the flashlight laser combos come together, so that way, if you do get it sighted in, say you don't have night sights, you have that laser. So really, you just have to kind of point that. Where as long want. as you have it sighted in right, yeah. point that laser, and that's where it's going to go. Don't yeah. rely on that unless you have it sighted in yeah. for <laughs> obvious reasons. But they do make those, so yeah. you know they make a lot of times. You'll see tactical freaking yeah. Joe Schmoes with their every single attachment and on AR, but yeah, most of the time it's laser light combo or yeah. some sort of form. But, uh, and then you mentioned shotguns. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shotguns are, are great. They're good home defense ones. A lot of people, are, you hear it, you know, all you got to do is rack the slide. Yes and no. <laughs> so if you have some little kid burglar coming in just to steal some stuff and not really do you harm, Sure, that'll scare them off. Yeah. But then there's the flip side to where if somebody is coming in or even multiple people are in your house armed, maybe trying to, yes, steal stuff, but maybe they are like, hey, if we run into a homeowner, we're going to obviously kill them. That does give away your position generally, and then they know what you have. So it could be good and bad. Yeah. Yes, most people, if they hear a rack of a shotgun, you really don't want to get hit by a shotgun because yeah. you're not just getting one hole. You're going to get several holes depending on what they have or one really big <laughs> one with a slug. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. There's really no way to prove that theory 
unracking yeah. the slide if that's going to scare people away or not. I I personally would rather not do it just to scare them away. Like yeah. I'm going to rack that slide and then be right on them and pull that trigger yeah. if I need to. I don't want to just rely on that scaring them away yeah. because it may not, especially if you have multiple people in the house, they could be in different areas and you not know it. And then you've given away your position to yeah. one or all of them. <clears throat> so there's that downside to a shotgun. If you have a semi-automatic, then you don't have that issue. Yep. <laughs> there's a, uh, the barrel size. Yeah. Barrel length. Most of us have long barrels for trap shooting, hunting or whatever. Not ideal <laughs> for home defense <laughs> yeah. because of that long barrel you're going to not be able to move around corners or just maneuver very good. You're going to run into stuff. Hell, if somebody's close enough to you, they can just grab it. Yeah. I mean, could you, you could use that as a club and just start swinging. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, you want to have a shorter barrel. Generally, the shortest you can legally have in a shotgun setup is 18 and a half inches. So you'll see a lot of shotguns being sell, sold as security or home defense, um, and they'll have the 18 and a half inch barrels. You can go shorter, but then it becomes a, if you have a fixed stock, it becomes a short barreled shotgun, which you can have. You just have to then register it with the NFA. Yep. SBR. Yep. And have an SBR. So you could do that, but 18 and a half is fine. It's going to be short enough to move around in a close quarter combat situation that they call it. So you're going to be able to move around and not have to worry about that hitting as much as a 28 inch yeah. barrel would. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and with shot, cool thing with shotguns is you could swap barrels out real quick. So I I had one actually sold to Hunter to where it came with a 26 or 28 inch barrel for field and trap shooting, but then it also came with an 18 and a half inch breacher barrel for home defense. So anytime we'd go out and shoot on the range, put the long barrel on it. As soon as I got home, swapped it out, put the home defense shorter one on, and then stored that away. From, and so yeah, and that that's. A great reason to have shotguns too is because you have that versatility. Yep. Um, ammo capacity may be a thing because <laughs> a lot of shotguns you yeah. are limited on the number of rounds that'll fit in a tube. Yep. Depending on if you're running two, two and, and a half, two or, and three quarter, yep. three inch. Um, in the movies, they seem to never run out, but in reality, <laughs> you're going to have about six to seven. Yep. Generally. <laughs> In a shotgun, pump shotgun. Um, some of them you can get the adapter and shoot those mini shells, get a lot more. So that's the only, another downside to a shotgun is your capacity. Yeah. Whereas you go with a semi-automatic pistol that is probably compact to full size, you can get, hell, in our Springfield uh, XDM, we get 19 rounds. Yeah. And you got 17 right there. So, yeah. you know, we would love to be able to just, Stop the threat in one shot, but let's be honest, 99% of us, it's going to take more than one shot Yeah, because we're either going to miss or not hit them in a vital area and be able to drop them or they have adrenaline going. They might be tweaked out on something to where it's going to take several rounds to stop that, threat. to stop them. I mean, you've <laughs> seen those, it's not, you haven't heard it on news in a long time, but there was that like zombie drug that yeah. was going on down in Florida where people would literally get shot like 10 times and still, still come, come at, at you. Yeah. Yeah. If you find yourself in that situation, a Joe Biden firearm will get you killed. Yep. <laughs> so having a higher capacity, uh, whether it's a rifle or a semi-automatic pistol, would definitely come in handy. Yeah. Or if you have multiple assailants coming in, yeah. you're going to need enough yeah. rounds to be able to stop all the threats. Yep. So, and then again, your adrenaline is going to be rushing. You know, you're probably not going to get every shot on target. Yeah. You need those extra rounds. Shotgun, you get a little bit more room for error just because of the spread, depending on how far away you're shooting. Good and bad because that gives you more potential for potential hazards. Potential for hazard because some of those BBs are smaller. Yeah. Can miss and go hit something that you don't want it to. <laughs> so there's there's that downside. Yeah. So Yeah, that's my biggest fear is having someone break in. Mm-hmm. Because I really don't want to have to put someone down. <laughs> no, you don't. Because yeah, then you have the whole legality thing. And yep. uh, especially if you're going to shoot an intruder, you want to make sure you, you kill them. You finish much. the job because they can't come back and see you. Yeah, which is, I think, bullshit. Yep. 
But think I think we have castle rules here, so we can stand our ground. But they could still probably come back and try to sue you. <laughs> so there was this gun shop that I actually bought my first guns through called She's a Pistol that was yeah. here locally. It was run by this lady and her husband and this group of kids during the day, normal business hours, came in to rob the place. He, um, they held a gun to like her head and were threatening this. And then he came out and then obviously gunfire was exchanged. He ended up, her husband ended up getting shot in the leg and dying. And, but then he was able to, I think he killed one kid and then injured the other one and one got away. Well, the one that was injured lived, sued them or ended up suing her. And because of legal fees and all this stuff, she lost the business because of all the legal fees because she was getting sued by somebody that came in, pointed a gun at her, killed her husband, but because of our justice system was able to sue her for getting shot. Yeah, that's I find that BS, but <laughs> it's if you yeah, you should not be able to sue people cuz you broke in, tried yeah. to cause harm to someone and then in the exchange you actually got shot or got harmed. That is the stupidest thing that yeah, our justice system is fucked up because that should not be like, hey, yeah. you were in the wrong here. You were doing something illegal. They were trying to stop you. You got hurt. You shouldn't be able to sue them. Yeah. Like, come on. You should be facing life in prison for as far as I'm concerned. So. The guy, and the guy was in prison, but he was still suing her. Yeah, like, what's the shit, man? Yeah. Like, it's what our country's come to, but. Yeah, well, I can't even figure out how to <clears throat> vote now for a speaker. Yeah. Have you seen that? So make sure you. You finish, <laughs> finish, yeah, finish them off, the job. but don't ever shoot them in the back. Yeah. Because that is no bueno. Defenseless. Yeah. But, um, so then we come to rifles. Obviously, uh, AR-15s are most people's choice yeah. because you can have up to, you know, however many rounds you want to. You can have a 10 round magazine or you can have a standard yeah, 30, 30 round. round magazine and have multiple or you can go with a drum mag. Yep. That's good for multiple threats. Yep. That way you have a lot more rounds and are able to fire rapidly and more control because you have a rifle, so you're able to shoulder it. So that's something you're going to have. Having a shotgun and rifle, you're going to have more control over and be more accurate than a pistol. Yep. Because, you know, if you've ever shot a pistol, they're hard to shoot accurate unless you're like Jerry Mukulik or whatever the name is. Like, (laughs) it's really hard to shoot a pistol in normal situations, yeah. accurate. And then once you get throw the in adrenaline and then fear yeah. and all that, you're gonna you could be all over the place. Whereas at least with a rifle and shotgun, you can shoulder it, get a good firm yep. grip and control it, and get it on target a lot easier. So my setup is I got one of each, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I guess I'll start with the handgun. So in my nightstand, and we don't have kids, so we can, we got a little more flexibility than Chris does. Yep. Um, so I have on my bedside, it's in like this drawer, but I have, we brought this on, I have a Glock 21. And mainly because I like it because it's a larger gun. You get a lot more control over it. There's not, with the 45 caliber, it's not snappy. I just love the way this thing shoots. And you get... 13 rounds of 45, which is much bigger than the 9 millimeter, so it's yep. going to cause bigger holes. You have the, you know, there there could be more over-penetration with this round. We live in a, you know, a decent-sized house alone, so that's not our biggest concern. Now, if we ever have kids, I may rethink this, but as of right now, I'm not wor- too worried about yeah. over-penetration. Our neighbors are... Far enough away from us, you know, I'm going to have to be going through tons of walls before it even hits their house. So, um, hold up, hollow points. I tend to use Hordene, Hordene, whatever it is. Um, these are just the regular hollow points. I've kind of switched on my carry guns. I have the ones with that filler. Yeah. So that way, if you shoot somebody through clothing, it's not going to start breaking apart right away. It's going to wait until it. Because that's because with these, you know, you can get the clothing yeah. stuck in there, and then it changes the ballistics of it. But these are fine enough. But for my carry guns, I have the the one with that filler piece in there. 
a little bit different, but so, and then obviously with this, I do have the option to mount a suppressor on there. I go back and forth on that because, oh man, I, <laughs> the legalities of using a suppressor. NFA item in a self-defense <laughs> situation, I, that could go, that could go bad. So <laughs> I typically don't have it on there, but what you have to think about is shooting a gun indoors without hearing protection. Yeah. It's gonna freaking it's gonna be loud. do some sort of damage. A lot of now you hear a lot of people, especially in the military, say that they shot close quarters, no hearing protection, and it didn't affect them because you're adrenaline. Yeah, I don't know. My hearing screwed up anyway, <laughs> so I have a feeling I'll go deaf. So that's why I'm like kind of going between the. I do keep like some earbuds that like noise canceling. I might slip on just because I don't want to go deaf <laughs> uh, from having to shoot a gun inside, but. I do have suppressor height night sights. So that way, if I do put a can on it, suppressor yep. height, so I'll be able to still use the sights. Um, they light up with that tritium three dot. It's really nice. And then I do have the O light on here. So I do have the option to have a flashlight, just a click of a button with my trigger finger. Or I also can do um, have a laser only or the laser flashlight combo. I don't have the laser sighted in. So I just have that light. flashlight on there because again like i said i want to be able to light up the subject to make sure it's something i do want to shoot so and plus our house gets pretty dark so that way it yeah. can help uh me see and i don't stumble down the stairs <laughs> <laughs> so i oh light i love their stuff i love their flashlights i have a ton of flashlights which i'll show you um i use them both for work stuff around the house like they are <laughs> they're awesome i love them they're bright as hell they're a little more expensive for flashlights, but yeah, not as expensive as Surefire or Streamlight, and they're just awesome. This is the Valor, the Balor um, combo for the gun. It's it's got a rail, quick detach. You just I love this little little <laughs> light that that burnt bronze color looks real good. So I could put this on, you know, if I wanted to mount this to my shotgun, which I'll show you, or the AR, I can, uh, but I can I just keep it on the pistol. <laughs> I had a cheap light from like aim that was like 20 bucks took it to the range because you want to shoot it make sure it's going to work after you shoot it that cheap one broke after shooting from the <laughs> recoil so you definitely want to make sure if you are mounting a flashlight to your gun it's a good quality one that and optics too yes like I bought a cheap optic for my first AR build I bought it at Bass Pro and I I didn't pay attention and I eventually found out that after firing it on the AR a couple of times, the reticle just would drop off and off left. I'm like, what mm -hmm. in the world? I found out that it's made for rim fire. And I was <laughs> like, oh, that would have been nice to know. Yep. Besides buying it and shooting it a couple of times and then finding it later. Mm -hmm. But Yep. So I keep that in our bedside. And then I have, we got other pistols kind of situated. I, uh, I did a video a long time ago on a keeper gun magnet that was mounted underneath the desk in my office because that's where I spend most of my time when I'm home. And then I had a Glock 26 under there. So that's a good place for to hide it. Um, in our old house, we had one underneath a shelf that only we knew about and was kind of hidden. So that's, that's cool. We Glock 26 is nice because you still get 10 rounds, Yeah, but you get, I, I shoot that pretty good. So that's, that was another one <laughs> I may or may not have in the house situated sometimes if I don't take it out and carry it. But then I do have these Olight flashlights kind of both in my office in some other places, just because they are bright. Yeah. Like, you're not going to be able to tell on the video, but they are blind. very bright. Yep. They're going to be blinding and dark, but they light up the entire space. Yep. There's different modes. It has a strobe mode, low light, all the way up to the, the bright setting. And it's... <laughs> I love this thing because if I go outside in the pitch black, man, it just lights yep. up everything. That's the way it is with my stream light. And I mm -hmm. just... Oh, I love that guy. <laughs> yeah. So if I know I don't have a flashlight with my firearm... There's generally one of these nearby. Yeah. And so we'll go with my shotgun. My other one I have set up that I specifically keep in the office hung above a door. <laughs> and this was, we actually had this as the gun of the week. A while back. A while back ago now. But this is the Mossberg 590 Tactical. And I put on the Magpul stock and foregrip. And it's that flat, dark earth furniture, 12 gauge, 18 and a half inch barrel. 
I usually keep it what's called cruiser raid ready. So I'll have um, rounds in the magazine tube, but I won't have one in the chamber. So yeah. all I got to do is rack it and then bam. Um, keep buckshot for in this gun for home defense. And then what I like about this is if I wanted to mount a flashlight to it, okay. I could because it has these uh, M-lock rails slots here where I can put a rail and then mount that flashlight or some other one. But if I'm using something like this, I'm probably just going to take my flashlight and use it in some sort of yeah. fashion like that. Um, but, you know, shotgun, it's one, one that you got to have for sure. Now, we have security cameras on the outside of our house, so I know... I'm going to be able to keep an eye on if somebody's breaking in. Depending on how many people are breaking in, <laughs> or I can see if they're armed or heavily armed. Sometimes you see a group of people with like freaking AKs and stuff coming in. I am not going for the shotgun. I'm not going for that Glock. 41, or 21. <laughs> I'm going for this. My 300 Blackout Air Precision AR-15 with a can. <laughs> Because I'm going to get 30 rounds, have good control. I got it sighted in um, for cl close quarter combat, and I'm not going to go deaf. Problem with it, obviously you got the weight on the front end, but I can deal with that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be able to not have a lot of recoil, um, stay on target. This is an old sight. I might swap this sight out with something a little bit different just because it is heavy. But it's the Burris, uh, what is it? Burris AR-332. It was my first site I bought on my first AR, like, <laughs> back in, like, 2014. So I just, like, I need to throw it on something. What I like about this is it has a light-up reticle. So yeah. it has one that's always etched in there in case your battery dies. But I have different modes to where you can change it to where it lights up, either red or green. And then dimness and all that. Yep, and then That's what the I dimness, got on that one. <laughs> which I really love. And it's got three times magnification, so nothing too crazy, but just enough. Yeah. Um, I might go switch to like a red dot with a magnifier, like the Romeo 5, and throw on a magnifier. EOTech maybe, but... Yeah, that's what I've been looking at. Like, Because I've been really tempted to take my other AR and making it a pistol mm -hmm. and doing something like that. <laughs> yep. But in the event that I can see there's a lot of assailants for whatever reason that are armed i'm going for this yeah. because i want to make sure i'm on target and have a lot of rounds and you know you don't want to get shot with a 300 blackout no because <laughs> <laughs> it's bigger than your 223 round over there yeah and i'm not going to go deaf in the process yep. <laughs> and it looks scary to some people <laughs> <laughs> i almost this close to bring in the 65 creed more yeah. And be like, this is for if I know some shit's going to hit the fan and I got to go long distance. Right. <laughs> There's, if we're in a zombie situation, yeah. I don't want to get too close. Yep. I'll be using that. <laughs> uh -huh. Problem is, you don't have a whole lot of ammo for it, though. No, I don't. I got maybe 100 rounds. Yeah. It's, it's more still than I got. hard to find. I only got like a handful of boxes for my 6.5. Yeah. But mine's bolt action. So I'm not going to go through a lot of rounds. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we have. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some things to think about, quality, ammunition. Um, obviously, you want hollow points for this. Definitely shoot your gun with your ammo that you're going to use for home defense or self-defense because some guns are picky. Yeah. They will not shoot certain brands, certain bullet weights. Yep. So you definitely want to make sure that whatever self-defense ammo you're going to use, you shoot at least one maybe multiple magazines through your gun. I know it's more expensive, but you want to make sure it's going to work because there are guns that are picky on certain types of ammo. So you don't want to have that, not know that your gun's going to be finicky and then have malfunctions when you are in a situation where you don't want that to happen. Yeah, I've heard Kimbers are real bad about it. Those mm -hmm. are the ones that have always come to mind. I yep. always hear, hear horror stories like, I bought this really nice Kimber, go shoot yep. hollow points, and it doesn't fire. It jams up every time. Yep. And some guns are like that. And you want to make sure that do some research on the gun. I know it may be like, oh, I love this gun. Do some research first because when the SIG P365 came out, they had issues to where yeah. they had to do recalls and, and you had to send them back and then there's a whole thing. So especially with a newer release gun, make sure 
that it's going to work. Take it out, shoot. Make sure you're not going to have those issues that other people have. Do some YouTube videos, online yeah. forums. Make sure, see what issues people are having with the gun you're interested in. Obviously, most Glocks, Springfield, six hours. For the most part, especially the models that have been out for a while, they've figured out yeah. any quirks. It's the ones that are recently come out, like, ooh, new at SHOT Show this year. Maybe give a brand new model that just got released a little bit of time to, you know, yeah, make it through the pace to see if it's actually working. But definitely, definitely take your gun that you're going to be using for home defense out to some sort of range. Get comfortable with it because you want to know what that gun's going to feel like, especially with the ammo you're going to be using, because you want to know exactly how much recoil you're going to have to deal with, how it cycles, and basically how your gun functions. Yeah. So you want to know your gun. Yeah. <laughs> because if anything happens, you want to, if you do have a malfunction, you want to know how to clear it quick. quick. So maybe do some drills. You can, There's drills you can do to simulate a malfunction um, to kind of help you. One cool thing that if, especially with pistols, um, if you notice yourself flinching too much and then it causes your accuracy to go off, have, go with a buddy to a range, have them load your magazine and put like a dummy round or two in there somewhere. Yeah. And that way you don't know where that is. So as you're shooting it and you come to that dummy round where it doesn't shoot, but you find yourself going like this, you're going to know, okay, I really need to work on not flinching, flinching. Yep. get more comfortable. And that way you're not going to be shooting holes in walls and stuff <laughs> that you don't want to be shooting up. Yeah. That, and I also watch a bunch of videos too on like knowing where your break is understanding what you do well at that point because i know my sig had that double throw and it was that hammer and it was like okay 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 oh there it is okay 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 up oh, there it is and it was like oh. yep it just drove me nuts but that's yeah. another thing for a defensive gun yeah you do not want a hair trigger yeah it sounds great awesome hair trigger i don't want to have no because you may not want to, to fire it. to accidentally fire it. Yeah. Like if you have a hair trigger and you're just maybe going around the house and you know, you have your hand on the finger on the trigger for whatever reason, you don't want to accidentally pull that trigger. Like, I mean, my buddy Ryan, we built him a gun and he has a hair trigger on it. Yeah. Like barely. It was like, I had a uh, Lyman trigger pull on it. It was like under two pounds, like <laughs> one point five pound yeah. trigger pull. I'm like, are you sure you don't want me to tighten this up? Or he's like, I'll do it. But you definitely want to have a little bit of a heavier trigger because you don't want to accidentally pull a trigger yep. when you don't mean to. Yep. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, heavy trigger pulls, blah, blah, blah. No. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want like a 15 pound trigger pull. Maybe, you know, yeah. get something. I mean, a five pound trigger pull. Yeah. Like what you have on a standard Glock or your standard pistols. Probably what you want to stick with. Yep. Now you can upgrade the trigger to where you don't have a lot of take up or it's yeah, not a lot of grit and stuff. A little smoother trigger a lot pull. Of the take up a lot of those hammer guns. Yeah. That's the, that's why I also got rid of that gun. <laughs> yeah. Then you have the, is it a single action, double action? Yep. Double action, you're going to have that long trigger pull. Yep. Which may be good in situations. Yeah. Or bad. I don't know. To me, I don't like. I, I like the striker fire pistols. So do I. After I had that Sig, I was like, "Oh, I bought it because I was like a Sig. It was a good deal. I should have just went and bought the Glock." Yeah, but it was and a good little gun. And of course, we got a delay in the camera. <laughs> I gotta figure that out, man. It's a I've been trying to figure it out. I don't know what it is. We may have to go back to the old school of just putting on the SD card recording that way. That Maybe suck, man. <laughs> so it, now it's either the program. My computer or the capture card, or which are three. the most expensive parts. <laughs> I know that would suck. I got a new cable, a new dongle. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, let us know in that comment section what you guys are using for home defense. Yeah. And why? <clears throat> yeah. Let us know. It'd be interesting to see what everyone else has got. Yeah, because you got people that live in apartments. You got people that live in houses, out in country, the, yeah, suburbs, different situations. Let us know what you have, why, what ammo you use. Yeah. If you have any comments you would like to add to ours, maybe ideas that maybe we didn't think of. Yeah. 
let us know. Make a discussion down there. Yeah, let's get it <laughs> rolling. Man, I know that um, Ruger Security 380 video has gotten tons of views. I've watched. I saw it. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it keeps going up. I got that out at the perfect time. Yeah, you did. Because before there were too many videos on it, and so yeah, yep. I need to do a cleaning video on it here pretty soon. <laughs> That's why it's not listed for sale yet. Yeah. Use it. But um, yeah, any other tips on home defense guns or what to look for that you can think of? Not off the top of my head. I think we talked about everything, really. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with rifle, especially if you're going to be using an AR, you have the flash hider versus compensator yeah. situation. If you're going to be using it for self-defense, I would go more flash, flash hider, hider. <laughs> because that can make you blinded yeah. <laughs> in a nighttime situation. Having that flashlight come out at the end of your gun, not only is it going to blind whoever you're shooting, but going to blind you. Yeah. Not like permanently, but for uh, see a big few seconds. <laughs> yeah. I know if at night and there's a flashlight or something, it's like, man, I see that flashlight for yeah, a while. A so not only are you going to have the hearing situation, you're also going to have now the seeing situation because of that flash. So definitely, I know compensators are good because it reduces the recoil. Let's be honest, ARs don't recoil much yeah. at all unless you're a <laughs> CNN reporter. They recoil like crazy. Yeah. But for most of us, they don't. So switch out the compensator for a flash hider, at least when you're using it for home defense. If you want to go shoot long-distance competition, yeah. it takes nothing to swap that out. Yeah, it's real simple. Mm -hmm. So definitely one thing to think about if you are using an <laughs> AR. And AR is allowed, not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> Compared to like a pistol or something, even a shotgun, ARs are going to be fucking loud. Yep. Get a can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then depending on where you live, I don't know. Yeah. If you live in somewhere like Massachusetts, yeah. That or Portland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still delayed, I think, right? Yeah, I haven't heard anything about that lately. Uh, mm -mm. I've been paying attention to the house, seeing if they can ever figure out who to vote for. Well, they keep voting for the same guy yeah. four times. Okay, obviously... Nobody's voting for this guy. Let's uh, pick somebody else. Yeah. How hard is that? <laughs> if I was a Republican or a Democrat, I'd pull everyone in an office and be like, y'all don't fucking figure this out. And the next one, don't even come back to this party. We're going to pull all your funding. But why do they, I don't understand why they keep trying to vote for the same guy. They've done four votes. He hasn't gotten enough votes. Yeah. And obviously, he's not the guy. Yep. Decide on somebody else and then vote. Yeah. Be like, all right. Why don't we all just throw in a name and whoever's name comes up the most, there's your speaker. <laughs> yeah, that and why are they actually, like, I'm shocked they haven't gone digital yet to keep track of this shit. Why do you have to count it? Because you're out there doing tallies. It looks like on there, I was like, just do a fucking digital thing. Then no one can get butt hurt on who voted for who. Right. It's kind of secretly. That's our government. Yeah. I'm Plus just, they I'm, want you to get called out if you yeah. fucked up the vote. Yeah. It's like, all right, this guy. It's been this move what, on. What they said this hasn't happened in like what hundred years? Hundred years, it's fucking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Well, I you wonder honestly what the, if you want to know what the state of our country is. Look at the house. We can't even figure out who we want. <laughs> honestly, though, would you want even though he's a Republican, would you want somebody from the state of California to be the House Speaker? No, I wouldn't. No, no. Let's move on. Find somebody else. Let's do Dan Crenshaw. Is he in the House? I don't know. Sure, he is. I think he is. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. One guy keeps standing up from Texas. Instead of just saying the fucking name, he's like, has this little speech every time he does it. And it's always the same thing. It's like, shut the fuck up. Say the fucking name. Sit your ass down. Mm -hmm. Oh, it drives me nuts. I, I swear to God, though, why are they voting for the same guy four times? Like, yeah. they should, if they do another vote, like, I fucking give up. Yeah. Like, we're you're all fired. Yeah, pretty much. Why didn't we all just... Trump didn't win. Why didn't we just keep on voting? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. It's the same much. situation. Yeah. Like, no, you don't want that guy. Move on to somebody else. Did you see that video I sent you? Which one? The one without a brain. I don't think so. Is that the one that didn't come through the attachment or no? I don't know. I sent it to you last night. Via text? I think so. It was text to Instagram. If it was Instagram, I didn't get it because I rarely check my Instagram. 
No, I sent it to you in text, and it's on Instagram. I don't know. Oh, you got to watch it. Did I get that? I don't, I don't know. know. I have to go back I and look. I was rolling. That's all I'm going to say. Let me look right here. I think. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't get that. <sighs> you need to watch that. <laughs> yeah, because it was unread. Yeah, I did not get that. Dang it. All right, I'll watch it after yeah. the show. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're watching video version. There yeah. Freaking delays killing me. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's it for this week. Episode 55, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Is what we're on. So definitely recommend this 14 year. Yep. Let us know what you got for yourself. Defense rounds and everything and what you do for your home setup. Mm -hmm. If you got anything else you want to add, leave it down in the comments so we can get back to you. Yep. So Chris... Let's wrap it up and tell everybody all those things. Remember, this is a YouTube podcast. Remember to like, subscribe, and tickle our bell. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or any other platform, remember to like and follow. And with that, have a good one. <laughs>